Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see you there, my friend. Today we have a video on weightlifting. Haha, you have been the prank. No, no, no. This is not a Swedish man teach you how to lift weight. This is college uh, guides reviews with Roderick. Let's begin. So, uh, the college that I'm talking about is the one that I have chosen to attend. So what's this college, you may ask? I'm glad you asked. It is Carleton College. Oh my goodness, you chose that over UCLA. How could you? There's a list of reasons I have prepared that I have not really prepared that will help everyone realize why I chose Carleton. So yeah, let's begin. So Carleton all started with um, a package in the mail for me. Now I have this package conveniently stored inside of my shirt and this was my acceptance packet to the college. So inside of it came this nice envelope which was more than what UCLA sent me so that's why I accepted it. <clears throat> Let's scratch it off the record. So Carleton is a college that starts in a... it was founded in... So, there are 2,078 undergraduate students from 50 states and 39 countries, with 10% of them are international students, 51% women, 49% men, 26% people of color, 12% first generation college students, 77% graduating the top 10% of the class, 181 national merit scholars, 22 national Hispanic recognition, Hispanic recognition scholars. So with that out of the way, um, what I was more interested in was, why have we never heard about Carleton before? Like, you would think that with something, um, although it's not like rank one or like rank two, or whatever, like uh, Williams, uh, Amherst, Swarthmore, um, you have all these colleges that are more recognized, and you have colleges that are actually lower ranked than Carleton that um, I I knew of before I even applied to Carleton, and then I checked up on the academics, and it's pretty pretty solid. It's like um, I like I just said over here, you have. 77% of Carleton students are in the top 10% of their class with 181 National Merit Scholars. They have an apple crisp recipe inside this book. And also, uh, something else that interested me was they sent me letters, um, which I also have conveniently inside my shirt. Two letters, because I'm interested in both political science and economics, hoping to double major. Because, um, yes. So the first one we have from the Department of Economics. So, um... They list the professors, and they're from PhD, 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 Stanford, U Chicago, U Chicago, Northwestern, Yale. Uh, let's see what else. Johns Hopkins, Boston College, UC Berkeley. Uh, the graduates go on to graduates of Carleton go on to work in either economics or law. On a per capita basis, um, Carleton it says over here is one of the most prolific generators of PhD grad students in economics. Recent graduates have pursued economics at Berkeley, Chicago, Yale, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Princeton, and Harvard. And the law students went to schools like Harvard, Chicago, Columbia, Michigan, Illinois, and Minnesota. So, at first I thought it was like the, oh, we have one student going to Harvard, and then they put it on the list there. No, 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 this is not the case. So, but yeah, um, I looked it up online, and UCLA and Carleton in like, I can't remember the exact year, but they sent the same amount of students to Yale Law School. And if you think about it, UCLA has like what? Don't, don't quote the numbers, like 30-ish thousand students total with like a decent size in poli-sci um, or economics interested in going into law. While Carleton has like a total of 2,000 students, which is like probably the same size or smaller than the Department of Political Science or Economics inside UCLA. And it, I understand that it's like party made accounted for by the fact that most UCLA graduates want to go to Berkeley or LA for the law school. And then we have our next letter. And then we have our next letter from the Department of Political Science. And over here, um, it basically talks about how, like, they, they go off to do internships a lot. Over here, uh, our students in the Political Science in Washington, D.C. complete an internship in a Washington office meet with legislators, journalists, lobbyists, executive branch officials during a seminar. Other people go to um, like Thailand, uh, Laos, uh, Myanmar. Um, you also have 
like a lot of things, the the graduates go to work in public service over here, business consulting, professional schools like law or public affairs. You get to meet with politicians over coffee or meals. And when I read that, I was thinking, that sounds awfully similar to schools like uh, Yale, Northwestern, Harvard, Princeton, um, even Duke, right? These schools all have things where you get to go meet um, political officials where they will go have lunch with you, where they'll have some coffee with you. You can discuss um, things that you've learned in your class with them. And if Carlton has that, it kind of sets it like on a similar level. Like it, it's not exactly the same level, but it offers a ton of different things. And I'm not saying this so I can be like, oh my gosh, I need to justify why I got into Carlton and that's a better school than Harvard. Each school has their own like pros and cons. And what they have with Carlton, uh, for my two visits that I've noticed, is the students are super, super, super nice. And also they offer a ton of like different opportunities for you because the staff as well are really nice. When I asked uh, UCLA a um, question, which will be in an upcoming video, um, they told me basically uh, that they couldn't help me with it. Well, when I asked Carlton through the phone call, they sent me an email directly to my account they just knew who I was by saying like my first name, like, oh yeah, we got you. And then they sent the email, I filled out the form, they got back to me within a day and got everything approved. So stick around if you want to find out what that is. Now like, kind of just talking about this school in general and why it's not being recognized um, as much as I feel like it should have been. Because it's a school like founded I think the 18, mid 1800s. Alright, so... Oh, let me go ahead and check up the date that it was founded. Um, this was founded 1866, November 14th. And I was at a uh, alumni meetup, like it was in San Francisco. It was uh, talking about business jobs, essentially, that most Carlton students go off to do things in um, political activism, NGOs, things like that. But a quite substantial portion of them also go into jobs like in Wall Street, um, in your large firms, banking, finance, whatever, right? Tech, a lot of go into the startups. So this uh, meetup in San Francisco, which they're also planning to expand to other places, is connecting alumni that have gone into like business-oriented pathways, like the standard that you think well, Harvard students go to, like where they go to Goldman Sachs, whatever, right? Um, and I met this one person. Uh, he was this um, elderly gentleman, this Chinese dude, uh, who went to Carlton in the 60s, and, uh, around the mid-60s. And what uh, struck me about him was, he was talking to me about how he found this, uh, the cause of an outbreak of disease in this one city in uh, the US. I believe it was on the East Coast of New York or something like that. And this one or medical, like super credible, I don't remember if it was like the CDC or like just like some department in the, the government. I, it's kind of hazy because this was like a month or two back. And I was originally planning on making the video earlier, but oops. So basically, they said that he was wrong. So he goes and proves this giant organization wrong, and he wins this like super big recognition, this award. And at the at the place where he's getting a, um, the recognition, um, they had an interview with uh, this one newspaper. I think it was New York Times. And he said they asked him, "So what college did you go to?" So he went to Carleton College for his undergrad, and then I believe it was Stanford. For his, um, for his PhD, and when he said both colleges, in the article in the end, they only put Stanford, and then he was like, excuse me, I said Carlton also. He was kind of telling me, he feels like Carlton is like this because it's, first of all, it's in the um, Midwest, and you have that Midwestern hospitality, everyone's super nice, and they're not going to go out and say, hey, I'm from Carlton. You know that school? Yeah, it's ranked five in the nation. Yeah, our school is better than yours. The people in Carlton are not like that. They're they're more like, just like chill. You, uh, if you ask them where they're from, they're like, oh yeah, Carlton. And then no one will ever know where it is because it's in the middle of the Midwest, Minnesota. No one knows. Minnesota doesn't, doesn't exist. The FBI is on to me. Uh, so yeah, like, for this video, I guess, it's just kind of talking about um, how Carlton's kind of this uh, hidden gem of the hidden gems, because liberal arts already, 
like intrinsically are very are considered the hidden gems of the American college system, American university system, whatever you want to call it. And you have this college called Carleton that's up there in the liberal arts, yet is so unknown. Literally no one knows about this college, yet it still somehow stays up there, which shows that it has to have something going for it, right? And that's the academic excellence, the professors there that are caring for you, um, that are super dope, and you have the super friendly students, although the food is not too good. Shh. But you have the school right next to it called St. Olaf, um, and they have super good food. It's like ranked top in the nation, and Carlton students can go down there to go grab food if they, if they so choose to, because they're kind of like linked together. So yeah, if you're interested, uh, go ahead, check out the webpage, the information's everywhere online. Um, and go ahead and apply if you're a uh, college, if you're a high school student going up to your senior year. Um, the application was super simple. It had a lot less work for me to do than a school like Princeton, which took me like three months of work, and it still got rejected. So, bless up, boys. Make sure to smash that smash button. Smash that subscribe button. Hit that like. Uh, button below and type up some comments. Oh my goodness. You are so cool College is Fun, you know, whatever like I don't I don't know uh, <laughs> um, So yeah, like thanks for watching uh, Stay tagged. I'm gonna be uploading another video later on about my secret secret thing that I did with the college admissions officers um, and I'll be uploading a lot more content in the following year, um, so stay tuned for that. It's not only me, it's not only going to be college. My next video will reveal what it is. Maybe not my next video, actually. One of my subsequent videos will reveal everything. Not actually everything. You know what? Screw this. By the way, by the secret, secret college admissions officer thing, I am not talking about I paid my way into college. No, no, no. That is the dirty, dirty. I got it in the normal way. Um, so stay tuned to see what it actually is about. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the gym to go finish up my, my workout.